Okay, today is the 1st of December. Um, we've just been discussing over Facebook. Seems to have been happening concurrently in different groups um, about what recipe we should brew for Paul Wicksteed's brew day since his passing. Rest in peace, mate. Um, and I was always going to brew the uh, Panhead Supercharger clone. So I've, all, I've been asked how I've sort of worked my recipes out a lot. And I thought, well, why not use this opportunity to show you how I worked the recipes out from the details we were given uh, from Mike at Panhead. And thanks very much, Mike. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, get my head off the screen. Okay, so this was the recipe we were given. 91% uh, ale malt, 5% caramel malt, 10EBC uh, fully crystallized malt, 4% caramel malt at uh, around 50EBC. Mash to achieve 10056, and you want it to ferment out to about 1012. And they've used the White Labs uh, 001 yeast, which could be USO5 or uh, any neutral yeast like that. Uh, it says the hops are 1.5 gram per litre, each of Amarillo and Simcoe at 10 minutes and also in the Whirlpool. And 1 gram of Centennial at 10 minutes and in the Whirlpool per litre. Uh, clean bittering hops, they use Pacific Jade. Uh, I'm guessing you could use like a, a warrior or maybe even a magnum something like that to take the total IBUs to 50. And then you dry hopped with 3 grams a litre of citra per litre of citra and 1 gram per litre of Simcoe. Um, and like me, these days they dry hop to taste, it's usually about 3 days and an 18 degree, a degree ferment. Okay, so where do we start? Well, we'll start with the malts. Um, I'll just get Beersmith up and running. So here we are in Beersmith. Change the name. Paul's Panhead clone. We'll pick my equipment profile. Change that to all grain. And we should be right to go. Alright, so what the recipe say, it said 91% ale malt. Now, Paul's from New Zealand and it's a New Zealand brewery. So, uh, well, the only malt we get here in Australia, anyway, from New Zealand, uh, easily get is Gladfield malt. Now, Gladfield malt, Beersmith has got an add in for Gladfield malt these days, which is handy. Uh, so, we'll have a look for their ale malt to start with. Gladfield ale malt. Uh, or American ale malt. Look, there's probably not that much difference between these two malts, and you could just probably use a Breeze Two Row or any ale malt, you know what I mean? Or a UK ale malt, wherever you are in the world. Um, this is an American style beer, so it's possible they use the American ale malt. Uh, so we'll use that. But uh, it really could be either one. Now, the amounts at the moment, since we only have percentages, um, aren't that important. But I'll put in five kilograms. Five kilo. Just to start with. Now, the next thing they said was the 5% caramel malt, 10 EBC fully crystallized malt. Uh, well, I just did a little bit of Googling just before. And I've remembered reading about this malt uh, when we started getting Gladfield malt here in Australia. And I, I googled 10 EBC crystallized malt, Gladfield, and a toffee malt is popped up. So I'm guessing that's what they use. If you can't get Gladfield malt um, and you're not sure, you know, ask your local shop uh, about uh, fully crystallized malt and try and get something close. So we're guessing, or I'm pretty sure that it would be the toffee malt that they use. 
5%. I don't know. I'm just going to add in 500 grams now just to start. And the other malt was a caramel malt at around 50 EBC. So the way I'd do it again, I'd look at Gladfields again because it's a New Zealand beer. So we'll filter out the Gladfields. Check down the colour. Oh, this is in SRM at the moment. We should change it over to E at BC. Hang on a sec. You do that in options, of course. Uh, units. SR, uh, colour units here. Change it to EBC. So we're talking about the same thing. All right, add grain again, go to Gladfields. Oops, Gladfield. And we'll have a look down here. There's a 60 and a 58. Aurora and Biscuit Malt. Uh, where are you? I don't know if we do that. Click colour, then that'll be listed, won't it? In order. Um, they say it's a caramel malt crystal. Uh, if I look at that... I reckon that would be it there, the light crystal. And if I quickly look on uh, Google and search Gladfield light crystal. So we go to the crystal malts and here we go here. Hopefully you can see it. Um, light crystal is anywhere between 40 to 70 EBC. So, you know, our 50 is in the middle there, or the what he said in the recipe is 50, so I'm, I'm going to go with the light crystal. But again, you could go with any regular caramel malt that's around that EBC colour. So we'll go with the light crystal. Light crystal, and we'll say, I oh, will just do 500 grams again. So there you go, we've got, I'm going to put the amounts up the other way. There you go, we've got our grains there that are used in the beer and our percentages are out. Now that's easy to fix. So you just go to grain percentage down here, click on the button, and this is where you sort out. You can just write in your percentages here. So it was 91 for the ale malt. That's the 10 EBC crystallized, which is the toffee malt, was 5%. And that leaves 4% for the light crystal. Click OK. And that's sorted out your percentages for you. And your amounts. Now he says there you want to mash to achieve 1.056. At the moment, mine's reading, I'm not sure if you can read that, uh, 1.057. So we can change that too by just clicking on this bar. And that pops up, and you just change your desired OG down to 1.056. 1 there you go. And we're in American Amber Ale now. We'll, get, we'll whack it into American Pale Ale for the style. It's not that important, really, to tell you the truth, that bit. But we'll see where we are. And you can see we're sitting a bit better. So that's the grain. You can round out these amounts if you like. See, mine's saying 5 kilos, 364.6 grams. You know, you might say 5 kilo, 350 grams, or 360 grams, 365. Uh, you might round up that to 300 grams and that to 240 or 30 or something. But you, you get what I'm saying. You can round them out if you want. You don't have to go for the 0.8 of a gram when you're weighing, weighing out your malts. Okay, so now we go into the hops. I'll start with the first one, Amarillo. They said they wanted Amarillo. Adjust the alpha acids, of course, to whatever your hops are. Um, 1.5 grams, they said, to my tw uh, per litre, to tw my 23 litres. So that makes um, 34.5 grams. Um, I'm just going to go with 34. Easier to weigh. 
and at 10 minutes. Same with the Simcoe. Thirty four ten minutes. Again, adjust your alpha acids. And then there's the Centennial. And that's at one, one uh, gram per litre. So I'll just go with a 23. And that goes in at 10 minutes too. And now we're onto the Whirlpool hops, which are the same amounts as these. Now, the way they say with the recipe, you'd add all these into Whirlpool. And if you use Beersmith for this as it's set up now, Beersmith's going to add a lot of bitterness from these hops. The final bitterness we're after is 50 IBUs. So if I put them in it into a hot whirlpool, that same amount of hops, I reckon we'd hit the 50 IBUs in a 10 minute steep uh, without any 60 minute bittering. So I'm assuming that their whirlpool hops are done uh, below 80 degrees, so they're not adding much bitterness. Or they're out there, they, uh, there's different ways of reading hops and hop bitterness in brewing. Um, perceived bitterness etc and I'm pretty sure that they're not adding bitterness from those whirlpool hops so what I'll do now is I say if you read further down the recipe and they said to add your 60 minute uh, Pacific Jade they used so we'll go to Pacific Jade to take the bitterness up to 50 IBUs so we'll add the Pacific Jade and we'll just go with a random amount of uh, 10 grams at 60 minutes. Remember to keep adjusting your alphas because they matter to what hops you have. And there's 10 grams at 60. Uh, and we're sitting at 46.5. So if I hit the increase amount till we get up to 50 IBUs, there's 50 IBUs, we're at 12.75 grams. And again, you can round that up or round it down. Uh, because my whirlpooling will be hot, I'm going to get a lot, uh, probably a lot more bitterness. I'm going to just going to round it down, to tell you the truth. That's up to you. Just to 12 grams. It's not going to make much difference. So then we're sitting at 49 IBUs. 49.1. Um, close enough for me. You can adjust that how you like. If you want to go spot on to 50, like they say, uh, you can do it. And so there we go. That's really the basic recipe besides the whirlpool hops. Now, we really, whenever we share recipes, we should really be giving percentages. You get more of a uh, accurate brew than you do from amounts. But it's a little bit hard, especially for beginners, to get the, to grasp the whole idea of the percentages. Um, and it's just easier to list a basic recipe. Uh, when you do percentages, you can fit it into your own. Um, system it fits into your own system a lot better uh, than you know if i put up a recipe that says four kilos of grain to make a certain beer and you do that in your same in your system which is all different then we're going to end up with uh, different beers that's why you, you use beer smith to adjust things like this anyway we'll add the whirlpool hops in i'll go ahead and do that now Amarillo was the same amounts as the 10 minutes hops. Whirlpool. Uh, I whirlpool usually for about 10 minutes, maybe five. It, it just gives me time to set up my chiller. Amarillo for a whirlpool. Simcoe. Same thing, 34 grams. Uh, 10 minute, but switch it to Whirlpool. And a Centennial was a 23 grams, 10 minute, and Whirlpool. So there we go, that's the recipe. 
All right, and you can add your yeast as well, which he used, uh, recommended the W, the White Labs yeast. But I'll probably be using um, either Y yeast, um, 1056, or USO5. I'll see, that. I'll look at the dates on the yeasts when I go to the shop. Now, I'll just put in USO5 for now. I'd, I'd probably use two packets to tell you the truth. And so that's it. And I'll just show you what I was mentioning before. If you can see the IBUs are up to 65.9. Now if I had a cut, that's because of the whirlpool as I said before, but I'm, if you, if you, there can be several different reasons as I, as I mentioned. But I'll show you, if I cut out the uh, 60 minute now and just get rid of it totally, you're up to the 50 or IBUs. So I wouldn't even, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even have to add the 60 minute to get to the 50 IBUs. But of course, um, I'm going to. And that's why, another reason why I've, I've left the, the steep whirlpool hops out of the original um, calculations. And it's likely that their whirlpool hops are done below 80. Um, that's 80 from memory. Don't don't quote me on that. Um, so they get all the flavour and not so no no bitterness out of it. But I hope that made sense, and you can understand it. Um, and uh, this one's going to be for Paul. I'll be brewing it in the next week or two. I'll make sure I video some of the brew day and upload it. Uh, I will list this recipe on uh, Cellar Dweller. I'll round off the numbers a little bit to make it easier. Um, but again, I'll put both the percentages and I'll put the my amounts. But uh, you'll have to fit it in, in into your system, of course. And that's where the percentages come in. Uh, and so even if, you, if you're following out other recipes I've done or anyone's done and it's only weights... Whack the weights in, what, what it's in the recipe in, and have a look at the percentages. And then adjust it in your system to get your OG right and uh, to everything else to match up that's listed in the other recipe. Usually when you list a recipe, uh, you know, you'll have the OG and the FG and all that. And try and get all that to match up by using the percentages and not so much the amounts. But anyway, this one's for you, Paul. I do have one of Paul's beers in the fridge. Um left from when we used to trade beer but I'm going to leave that for the brew day and hopefully um, one of my mates Pete or Si or someone will come around on brew day and we'll share that beer as we're brewing all right cheers okay I just want to add this on the end now it's a couple of days later I still haven't uploaded this video um, but since then uh, Tony Yates um, has made a version of the recipe too, and I've just checked it out. It's, it's virtually identical. Uh, it's a 19 litre version, and it is on the Beersmith website. So down the bottom, I'll leave a link for that version. Um, anyway, you'll still get knowledge out of, the, of this um, as to how I come about it, and he probably did it in a very similar way. Um, and also, I'll leave a link to SJ's video about the brew day as well. Um, and he'll explain uh, Tony's recipes too. All right, cheers. This one's to Paul. This is my cream ale. Um, everyone who knows me knows I've been brewing this cream ale for a while. It's my version of Jared's killer cream ale. Look at that, look how clear it is. There's no uh, finings or anything being used in that. Oh, besides, um, I shouldn't say no findings, no gelatin or anything besides our uh, worflock in the boil. Anyway, cheers. Here's to you, Paul. Rest in peace, mate.